But just as we did at the outset of this crisis to put in place the protection against eviction, as we move into a different phase, we will have to uh, consider what protections are appropriate uh, for uh, a longer term period and what bigger changes we want to see. Actually, everybody in this chamber has a part to play in that, as have uh, the, the entirety of the Scottish population. Uh, I would never, ever, ever have wished uh, the circumstances in which we're having uh, these discussions, but it is undoubtedly the case that it gives us an opportunity to change things for the better. Uh, 19 is an unprecedented challenge for our modern world, but it's also a unique opportunity to build a better future, to create a safe and prosperous world, and an international system that recognizes who's left behind and strives to lift them up. After crying a world order that better reflects the 200 nations of the world, a time will come when those will ask, what did we do in the period of COVID? to be able to make the world more equitable, more just, and to make countries better capable of meeting the other existential threats of the climate crisis and indeed of the behaviour of our citizens. Whether it's media outlets themselves or politicians at podiums, you can be rest assured that sooner or later you'll have heard or read them say that this so-called crisis, meaning the pandemic, brings with it the opportunity to change things in a direction which they all claim is for the better. The phrase new normal has been repeated consistently day after day, but what's interesting is during this bombardment of normalising the concept itself, they've actually changed the purpose of what it was initially for. New normal was initially supposed to be learning to adapt to live alongside a virus. Now it's being touted as an opportunity to change things. And let's not forget that this lockdown initially started as a means to flatten a curve in theory. We were told that it had to be done in order to ensure there wasn't an influx of patients at the one time at any given hospital which, if not prevented, in theory, could lead to hospitals becoming unable to cope. Now, granted, that's an understandable decision if we take the idea that they were erring on the side of caution. However, that caution was based on misguided and incorrect information. We now know that, really, but you'd never know it if you spend your free time listening to the TV and or one of the politicians at a podium. They're dragging this out deliberately because it's about more than combating a virus. Even if it initially was, for argument's sake, it certainly is not now. This virus has brought about the opportunities previously not afforded to them. Just think about it. <laughs> really think about it. So this is something that came to my attention. This isn't a very long video. But it's just a few things I'm starting to notice. A bit of a pattern, you could say. So we have this here from Today In Fact. Equality and Human Rights Commission launches inquiry into racial quote-unquote inequalities highlighted by coronavirus. Hmm. The UK's Equality Watchdog has launched an inquiry into the entrenched racial disparities highlighted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, every disparity, according to the anti-racist experts, is racism, of course. <laughs> However, the move by the Equality and Human Rights Commission comes after a UK government-backed report by Public Health England revealed that ethnic minorities are disproportionately affected by the coronavirus. Isn't it interesting that all the Scottish media and activists are referring to the English report? But what did Nicola Sturgeon say at First Minister's Questions time just a few days ago in relation to the Scottish inquiry? Hmm. Let us find out. The issue of uh, analysis of the impact of COVID, um, as uh, Patrick Harvey is uh, possibly uh, aware, Public Health Scotland uh, released some initial analysis, I think two weeks ago today on the, uh, the 20th of May, if I'm getting my, my dates uh, correct, where it said it had undertaken uh, initial analysis to investigate whether COVID-19 outcomes uh, varied by... She dances around it too. Initial, initial. Then she goes on to stress that more needed to be done. <laughs> she can't outright admit it. <laughs> she can't outright admit that the report kind of scuppers her whole art narrative, but hey -o ethnic group. Uh, they said in uh, that report that further work uh, was required um, and based on the available data to date, the proportion of ethnic minority patients among those seriously ill uh, appeared to be no higher than uh, the proportion in the Scottish population generally, but they caveated that by saying further work uh, was required and further work uh, will be done and in parallel uh, work has been undertaken to explore and understand the patterns uh, emerging from other parts of the UK. So this is but yet the English report doesn't need any further attention. You notice. However, it says the move, yeah, sorry, and it comes amid a renewed focus on the treatment of people of colour around the world following the death of African-American man George Floyd in police custody. The watchdog said it hoped to deliver clear evidence-based recommendations for... <laughs> clear evidence-based, oh yeah. Evidence-based. I love when they throw that in there as if it's really based on evidence. 
The, these people are barking fucking mad. Part of my French. You really think any of their recommendations are going to be built on the back of legitimate evidence? Anyway, it says for urgent action to tackle entrenched racial inequalities. A disparity does not indicate racism. A disparity does not indicate inequality on the basis of racism or race or sex or gender or whatever. But in the eyes and the lens of these people that push this narrative, all of them, regardless of which company or activist group or politician we're referring to here, all these so-called progressives that have the same progressive ideology and share the same worldview and the same future plans even, they all share the same lines when it comes to looking at the world. And if things aren't equal in theory on paper, then it's got to be due to some form of discrimination. And it justifies them then putting things in place to rectify those disparities, which amounts to nothing short of positive quote unquote discrimination, diversity quotas, etc. You name it, they'll do it. Anyway, it then goes on to say, uh, we intend to use our statutory powers to address the loss of lives and livelihoods of people from different ethnic minorities. <laughs> what about Scottish people? What about being held accountable, or the Scottish government anyway, being held accountable for the fact that the majority of our deaths have come from fucking care homes? Now it could be argued that care homes have been rubbished because of the Scottish government's own policies of shoving people untested into care homes. Or it could be argued that people working in said care homes brought it in themselves, considering the fact the theory is essential workers seem to be devoid of getting it, exempt even. <laughs> anyway, uh, he then says, or whoever this is, we added an inquiry as one of a number of steps we are taking as part of a wider programme of work to address systemic race inequalities. This includes reviewing and strengthening our existing calls in the government to put in place a comprehensive race equality strategy. We have also been active on specific pandemic issues affecting some ethnic minorities, including predicted grading and education and returning to work policies. Predicted grading and education. So if Tyrone or Jamal get a low grade via predictions, it's inequality, it's racism, it's because they're brown and black. But Tom and George, they get low grades. Well, nothing to it. Anyway. The reason I bring this up as part of the bigger picture, so to speak, is the fact that it wasn't that long ago. It was the 15th of May that they announced it, building a fairer Scotland with well-being at its heart. Now this was before this shit started with this guy in America, George Floyd. Well before. It says uh, down here, the Social Justice and Fairness Commission was established by Nicola Thin Loops to consider options for quote unquote independence, but also action that could be delivered now to make Scotland a better place for us all to live how to rebuild from the current quote-unquote crisis created by the part no year lockdown. Our work has a vital role to play in harnessing the very best ideas, yada yada yada. Uh, as we recover and we rebuild, we must not return to the way things were. So it's not that we can't because things are so bad, it's that we must not. So they're making that choice. Uh, we can use many of the changes we have already embraced to create a fairer nation. Now, who's that fairer nation going to encompass? Well, if you're starting to put the picture together yourself, you'll realise it's rather little groups of people that they have classified as being disproportionately affected, whether it's women or ethnic minorities or disabled people. <laughs> now, I can get behind the idea of putting things in place to help disabled people, but women and ethnic minorities, go and fuck yourself. EMIT is a commission is to produce a route map to the real prize of quote unquote independence, a new social contract between our government and our citizens. A contract that will build an inclusive rights based society where everyone is cared for and supported from baby box to grave. Where everyone's given the opportunities they need to flourish to quality of outcome. This guy says equality of opportunity and equi uh, equity, sorry, disguised as equality. And they finish off here with, as we begin the road to recovery from this pandemic and securing a brighter future for Rainbow Unicorn Land, our focus must be on building something better than our old normal. Now, as I also covered in a previous video regarding these people, look at the people that are part of this, some of them. Anti-racist expert, anti-racist. Another one, anti-racist. Then we've got the proverbial SMP feminists in and around there. And I haven't cared to look at the rest of them. I don't frankly care. The fact remains the same that they had this commission put in place prior to deal with racial inequality and now lo and behold the narrative of George Floyd has allowed them to justify talking about so-called racial inequality. The first papers that the Scottish government pumped out in regards to COVID-19, there was mention of a greener, fairer, sustainable Scotland in the first paragraph or so. 
So it's no surprise that we're now seeing articles like this coming out. The Scottish Government get to feign ignorance and pretend that this isn't the plan all along. They just get the activist groups to pile the pressure on. <laughs> Spend the best part of 2019 banging on about a climate crisis, only to then forget about it completely. <laughs> your activist groups are doing it on your behalf, it seems. However, it says here, pressure marks on Rainbow Unicorn Government for greener post-Covid Scotland. How convenient. How convenient. A fairer greener, sustainable Scotland. Now we've got the activist groups coming out and piling pressure on for them to do just that. Uh, it says here, massive pressure from civil society organisations is bearing down on the Rainbow Unicorn government demanding post-Covid action on the environment. Oh, yeah. A coalition of 80 groups including Oxfam, Friends of the Earth, Unison and Poverty Alliance Scotland is calling for a recovery that delivers a fairer and greener Scotland. Now how are they going to win round people in relation to a fairer Scotland? Well, look at the amount of people that are at food banks just now. Look at the amount of unemployment just now. Look at the amount of people that will be looking for anything to pull them out the shit they've been placed into. Food banks are on the rise, child poverty is on the rise, etc. I've been through this before, but this lockdown has made it twice as bad, if not three times as bad. The new coalition is asking for the Rainbow Unicorn government to prioritise essential public services and claims national policies should promote more equal wealth redistribution with minimum income guarantees. Minimum wealth distribution. Fucking what? And who will that benefit, I presume? The disproportionately affected groups, yeah? In order to pre-virus business, as usual, is both unrealistic and unwanted. So it's not, again, as I said, a case of we can't go back because things are so bad due to the virus. It's the fact that they've put rules in place, they've got a narrative to spin, and they don't want to go back. People have to understand that it isn't the virus preventing us going back to the way things were. It is these people. Trying to pre- Oh, sorry, I've read that. Peter Kelly, director of Poverty Alliance, said since the start of the so-called crisis, borders open and all that, you know, we've seen the strength of compassion and solidarity at the heart of our communities. But we've also seen that our economy is failing to live up to these values. Our economy is failing to live up to these values. That's because it's been shut down, bud. Our social security system and labour market have failed to protect too many of us from a grip of poverty, including women, disabled people, and people from black and ethnic minority communities. So, white men, fuck them. Doesn't matter about them. Ah, oh, no, screw them. Screw them. It's only women, disabled people, and blacks, you see. They're not all that's important here in Rainbow Unicorn Lands. When is this shit gonna stop? Why plan our economic recovery? We must build back together. We must design a more just taxation system provide uh, affordable and accessible public services, build a labour market that works for everyone and ensure that everyone has an income that meets their needs. And Ranch, campaigner for Friends of the Earth Scotland said, there was a chance to transform society and the economy in a way that puts people and the planet first. Well, isn't that something? Considering that sentiment is predicated on the fact that climate change is a man-made crisis when it's not. So, really does remain to be seen just what you're referring to there, or what you really mean. This person for the Rainbow Unicorn government said that the COVID-19 pandemic, quote unquote, has been an unprecedented global crisis which has fundamentally changed every aspect of our lives and the immediate focus for governments uh, to continue must be on protecting lives and livelihoods. We also recognise that the dual emergencies of non-existent man-made climate change and biodiversity loss have not gone away and must form a central part of our recovery from this difficult time. Oh, it's all starting to make a bit more sense now. We welcome this contribution to our discussion on how we can deliver a green recovery and a just transition to net zero as we explore the new challenges and opportunities that we face. Isn't that sweet? And that leads me to this. Racism is apparently an issue in Glasgow, according to the Black Lives Matter demonstration organiser, who says, as someone who has lived in Glasgow his whole life, I have unfortunately experienced a lot of racism and a lot of discrimination here. It's fine to say that, but there's a pattern that's emerged with a lot of your activist types, and that is that you have redefined racism and discrimination to encompass whatever you want it to encompass, such as microaggressions. So I presume if you lived in a world where microaggressions were a real thing, and they showcased evident racism, then yeah, yeah, you're probably correct in saying that uh, you've experienced a lot of, say, discrimination and racism. But here in the real world, I don't know. 
He then says, I think it's important that locally people take this opportunity to learn about the injustices people here face, open their eyes to the fact that there is discrimination and learn how to utilise themselves and educate themselves without discrimination. Any black person, any minority in Glasgow can tell you countless stories of discrimination, whether it's belief or sports. You only need to look at this kind of language that is thrown about on sporting days or old firm match days and what people say to the players. Well, isn't that something? Considering the fact a lot of the people in Scotland that are considered a minority come from countries where we would probably receive the exact same treatment over there, but yet that should blow a hole in your anti-racist narrative that you've got going here. You know the anti-racist narrative that you people all subscribe to that proclaims that whiteness is the problem, white supremacy instead of racism being a concept that anybody could realistically be the perpetrator of and or the victim of. You people have insinuated and implied and recreated the definition to insinuate that white people are the problem, white supremacy is the problem, our society is the problem, and it all needs to be torn down. Like the good little communists just really are. Hmm. Uh, he says down here, it's right on our doorstep. Oh, man. it really is because he's black and he knows. I think this would be a great time for the people of Glasgow who feel like it isn't an issue to learn about the issues and educate themselves. See how they can become a positive, a positive force, sorry, and see themselves as a force of change. So hand in hand with the media and many politicians, they're all part in this narrative that people need to be re-educated, they're calling for more to be done. For example, uh, if I could find the article because I've got so many tabs open, it says here, here are four ways Glaswegians can support the Black Lives Matter movement safely this weekend. All oh, riveting stuff. It says down here, like, sign the petition for George Floyd, sign the petition for We Can't Breathe, yada yada. Then it says here, sign the petition for British schools to implement teaching British children about black history. You know, and there's all this talk of anti-racist education being implemented, even though it's already been implemented, but more off anti-racist education. Now it's about bringing the conversation and discussion to light about the injustices all playing into the Social Justice Commission, which talks about righting the wrongs of so-called injustices. There's a bit of a pattern emerging here.